Everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shake Rock your, your body. body. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stacked yeah. it. Yeah. Stacked, Stacked is, is back. Is back. back. All, All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nice bah, going, guys. Bah, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Hello. Hey, hi. Hello. Welcome hi. back to uh, welcome back to, to, to Stacked. We're we're back. We're back out here. Um, sorry, sorry about that. The little uh, hiatus there. You know, we had we had, we had to take care of some shit. You know, we had to. You know, we had, we had, we had things to to fucking fucking do. Uh, we were. M- mindsets to be in, moods to be in, but um, you know we've 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 taken our time and uh, we're we're back and we're ready to, we're ready to kick some ass again, aren't we, fellas? We're ready to talk some dang yeah. movies, and we thought we thought we'd 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 uh sort of slowly come back into the stacked mindset by starting out with a little after hours episode. You know, there's lots of things to talk about in the world today, lots of things to catch up on with each other you know um so you know i'm if you don't know me my name is ethan hello um and i'm joined here by my friends chris and brandon hey guys hello 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 brandon you um you got a lot taller since the last time i've seen you um yeah we haven't seen uh, each other for a bit it's been it's been a while man it's been a while um what what's going on what why you uh why for for all the listeners which is everyone besides you know me and chris and brandon uh brandon is currently standing up right now and holding his microphone uh brandon do you want to like <laughs> do you want to cue the listeners into why why are you standing why are you standing so so ethan and i were very irritated by the movie moulin rouge and i was standing up in a fit of anger and he and was, I was lying down laying down in despair yeah and he said I could just lay here or sit down forever or something like that. And I said, I could stand forever. So <laughs> and we decided to make a little, a little bet out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if Brandon sits down before I stand up, um, he loses this little wager. It's not even a wager, not wagering anything. Maybe I just our dignity, self-respect. Um, and if I stand up before he sits down, then I am the loser. Uh, I'd like to report that things are going pretty well for me. You know, I'm still, I'm, as Elton John would say, I'm still sitting. No, but seriously, he, <laughs> he said, uh, I'm still standing. You know, uh, yeah. I, I had to overcome a lot of obstacles uh, sitting down today, uh, such as I had to turn off the AC, um, I had to get some cold water from the fridge, and I all. And thank God for wheels on chairs because I was able to maneuver around this house like a like a bat out of hell, you know. Chris, what what do you think of this? This is very much back to basics with the two of you. This feels like something <laughs> you were in college. This is like the kind of thing I feel like I would walk into the apartment and like you guys are just doing, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's that's the kind of energy we want to bring back to our return. No, right? yeah, it, we got we're, we're picking it up back. right where we left off. Um, you know, we got, we got, we got some really, uh, big stuff to talk about, but before I want to do that, I just want to just catch up with you guys. It's been a, it's been two months since we recorded last time. Um, right. When was our, when was our last episode released prior to this one? Well, um, here's the thing. Two months ago, right? Yeah. June? We, we've actually, we actually recorded an episode. Um, yes. There's an unreleased that, episode. An unreleased that you guys will hear next week. Um, so we're gonna put that out after this one, and then after that we'll be back to the normal stacked, uh, you know, run, uh, airing times, uh, procedure formula. Um, but we wanted to start with a little after hours because we got some lots of stuff to talk about. But um, and after episode one hundred, look out for look out for look you out know for what. No, no, after episode 100. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh we're 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 sort of you know, we're we're in developments for something new for Stacked after our 100 episodes, you know? I feel like I feel like uh 
now's a good time to talk about this, I guess. You know, we we've um we've thought a lot about the the show's formula. Um we love talking about movies, but um we're going to just do dinosaur talk full time um after episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a throwback. <laughs> throwback. No, uh we're just going to we're just going to change some things, you know? We're going to we're going to change some things. It maybe it'll it'll liven the show up a bit more, you know? Um one of those first changes is we are getting rid of Brandon after episode 100. So um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's being tossed in a fo- in a forklift. And <laughs> yeah, we're going to Costco show. We're actually going to live stream his banishment, um his exile live for all the viewers to watch. But um we're just gonna be we're we're, we're workshopping stuff, but we wanna we wanna make some some tweaks to the show. So, um, you will see that and how that comes to be. We'll we'll keep you all updated on what that is. But we're still we're still thinking. We got we still got some episodes. We got what the next episode to come after this is eighty five. We got fifteen episodes to figure out what the fuck we're gonna do next. So yeah, we'll That's see. Time. And that will be like season two of Stacked. You know, season one was a hundred episodes. We're going like by One Piece rules here. You know. Or like one season is a hundred episodes. So season yep. two is going to be some very new, maybe not too new, but it's going to be different. And it may we'll never s- end. It may never end. Probably unless remember our one pact, the only way this ends. Well, that's not actually. Maybe well, that won't my, end. We, yeah, we'll have true. to we'll have to think of a new thing. We'll have to think of a new yeah, thing. If we but it it, that, yeah. it still could happen in the next fifteen true. episodes. So mm-hmm. we shall see. Oh um, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> if we all if we all get three triple stacks, if we all pick the same movies. Um, we've done a one double episode. triple, haven't we? We got no. we got pretty or close. Triple double. We got Sorry, something. It, it was the Ghibli episode. We had a guest, so like it was a lot yeah. harder to do that, but still, we got close. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> my exhilarating commentary. Uh, but uh. Yeah. Rusty, huh? <laughs> I am rusty. Um, let's talk about some movies, guys. I want to talk about some movies. It's been two months. Should we talk? Watch. Yeah. Should we just go through? Like, what I was doing is I was looking at um. That, so our last episode aired on June fifth. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of movies since then because that's almost that's over two months now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'm just fan, kind of fanning through my letterbox here and looking at like some of the highlights of like great movies that I checked out. Um. Also, can Double, I just say, yeah. uh, before you do that, I just realized something. Today, the date yes. of this recording is August 8th. We have been college graduates for exactly one year. Oh, we, wow. We well, graduated exactly a year that. ago. Isn't that crazy? Wow, that's crazy. Something to think no, about. Anyways, Jesus. Chris, what movies have you been watching? Tell us. I don't know. There, I mean, there's been a bunch of stuff. I um, One of my favorites that I got to check out in those two months was this movie called Us and Them. That one really yes. stuck with me. Um, I'm I'm gonna fan over a couple of ones that were either like just dull or forgettable. Um, <laughs> Kicking and Screaming by Noah Baumbach. Brandon recommended me that a little bit ago too. That was great. Um, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Beautiful. Great well, film. Still a great movie. Uh, very cute. Uh, boat People. Love Boat People. And hey, that per- that director like goes hard. Um, I'm gonna say I don't want to take up too much time here. Uh, Fire of Love was fantastic. Oh. I'm glad I got to see that in theaters. Um, I recently, the other day, my last one I'll throw in here, uh, yeah. I watched uh, Yasujiro Ozu's Good Morning. Made me oh, laugh yeah. and emotional. A little bit yeah. of both. I love that. So good. Love um, me some Ozu. All right. What do you guys got? What's the highlights of the, of the, Bra- in the last two months? Brandon, something happened to you in these past <laughs> two months that yeah, gave about? you the opportunity to watch a lot of movies. Yeah. So I'm... I'm going to narrow you to only, you can only to mention 10 of the movies you watch because you watched a shitload of movies. Yeah. I'm you counting. probably watched more than double. You probably watched you more than double my count. Yeah. I'm counting how many I've seen this. Past because, months. ladies and gentlemen, and people of all genders, Brandon got COVID again. And I didn't, and I lived with them. <laughs> and I live with them. Um yeah, once I found out, I just I got the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> I, I left him to rot. 
<laughs> okay, I, was like, I counted how many I saw over the past two months. Does yeah. anybody want to take any guesses to how I'm many movies s- I watch? I'm gonna say hundred. I'm gonna say hundred. I'm gonna go seventy six. I've seen a hundred and fifty one movies oh since God. June six. In two months. <laughs> In two That's months, more than he's watched. Days. It's more than, That's, That's more than the number of days we've been gone. <laughs> That's more than double the amount of days we've been gone. Yeah. I had I had time oh. on my hands, guys. And I know, but like, the <laughs> mental fortitude that that takes. Well, yeah, I can average maybe two without wanting to kill myself every day. <laughs> well, That's crazy, dude. Okay, you got to give me the highlights. All what right. You got? I found uh, one of my new favorite movies. Joey currently has the DVD of it because I lent it to him when I went up to From LA the, the other day. Yep. Yes. We, uh, we watched the I watched The Best of Youth, the six hour Italian movie. That was the last movie I watched. Um, what? Well, uh, what? Well, after my co- like the first movie out of covid and my last movie like into like going back to work and i didn't expect it to be so amazing because usually long movies can be tough but when you have a lot of time on your hands and you know you can like interpret stuff that that was probably my favorite um i watched rrr since the last time we talked Oh, and yeah, I've watched far. it four times since we Wait, did we talked. was that all of fresh watch since No, no no no. I I brought it up on stacked and you two haven't seen Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was the one who talked about RR and you guys like I haven't seen it. And now look at that. You two are Brandon's obsessed with that movie. It's his favorite movie of the year. And Chris absolutely loves it. Yeah. Uh yeah. I watched a four hour uh painting movie called La Belle Nosus. It's French, it's really good. It's a captivating movie. Uh what else have I watched? to do i'm just scrolling through my 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 uh diary here there's a lot you know nope yeah. nope one of the best nope. movies of the year say, save that for me yeah save i me. won't say too much about that but <laughs> that's one of my favorites uh i watched uh in the mouth of madness great john yes. carpenter movie kind of Carpenter's underrated best super underrated. i watched that in the thick of covid so i felt like i was like <laughs> it, you felt, felt like, like you were in the mouth of madness exactly uh i watched <laughs> open your eyes which is the spanish version of vanilla sky i saw it before vanilla sky and then it did a double feature <laughs> and it's so good vanilla sky does not compare vanilla i sky finally sucks. watched taste of cherry that was really hey, good finally good there finally. we go <laughs> great movie i watched uh rizuke hamaguchi movie called happy hour that was oh, really great yeah. five hour movie yeah, lots of long movies for me. I, you know, if you have the time, some of this was during COVID, some of it wasn't. You know, yeah. Uh, and I watched a cute little romantic comedy that I liked a lot. It could happen to you, and another one, uh, called When We Came to When We Came Together. They came together. Sorry, my bad. It's, it's okay. It, it's and that's one of your favorite movies. comedies now, isn't it? And it is. It is one of my favorite spoof movies for sure. Yeah. How many am I at? Seven, eight. I don't know. You, I'll, give you, I'm gonna list... I'll give you two more. Two more. Uh, Ethan and I watched this great western called Jeremiah Johnson One with of my Robert Redford. Favorites. I was. So I literally was. That. I was only watching it because of the meme, and I loved it. Yeah, I mean, it was just a great all around movie. And what else? Let's start. Last let's one. end with let's end with Born on the Fourth of July. You dug that one, I remember. I really dug it, like anti-war, but also like a good portrait of like veterans in America and like how they like sacrifice so much and the country doesn't do much for them. And then like, yeah, it's just a loss of it. It's so beautiful too. Like Oliver Stone, underrated director, I gotta say. But yeah, great, great time for me for the most part. Fuck Trolls World Tour. I finally watched that. <laughs> you watched all the DreamWorks movies in the past two months. Yeah, I did. I finished them. <laughs> and not a lot um, of them were good. <laughs> Boss Baby 2? Good movie. You know, I didn't watch too many movies these past two months. I did a lot more other stuff, more reflexive stuff. You know, I did a lot of reading instead, you know, uh, and writing. Um, so I spent my free time. But I did watch some really good ones. I... Um, uh, d- dishonorable mentions i watched all the despicable me movies in a day or the, in the span of two days um that fucking 
obliterated me and I wanted to die. And I watched the first Trolls movie with Brandon. That was awful. Um, but some really good movies I watched were, um, yeah. So I watched I watched Snake Eyes, great Brian De Palma film. Nick Cage at the top of his game there. Um, I watched two phenomenal volcano documentaries, which kind of got me on a volcano kick. Um, I'm currently on a quest right now to get a nice, good, meaty book about volcanoes. Um, I watched Werner Herzog's Into the Inferno. Um, I watched that with an edible, and that just fucking floored me. And then I watched Fire of Love, like Chris mentioned, and that just blew me away as well. Um, Such a powerful film about just two ethereal forces in our life, which is love and volcanoes. Um, I watched... What else did I watch? Um, fuck, can't think of anything else. I oh, I I watched this really good HBO documentary called "We Met in Virtual Reality." So it just came out. Oh, you were talking yeah, about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought it was gonna be super cringy because I guess I just assumed that about you know uh people who play in VR, but it's a film that spotlights uh three different lives of people or couples in vr chat and one's about uh, a sign language teacher who has sign language classes like they built a school in virtual reality that's free you can go there and learn sign um and it's and then if one follows uh this couple who are just like who are just starting who met in vr chat and their relationships really just beginning and flourishing and they talk about how they met in real life after that and then they talk about another couple who have been together in VR chat for a while and got engaged in VR chat, even though they've never met each other in the real world, but they've spent so much time in VR chat that they got married. And I thought, I thought it was going to be really cringe, but um, the entire movie is shot within VR chat. It's a documentary and it is beautiful. It made me cry like three times. Um, phenomenal documentary. I highly recommend it. And then, of course, I got to talk about uh, probably the best movie I've seen both this year and in many years, um, Jordan Peele's Nope. Now, that that movie is like, I've never felt so passionate about taking apart and analyzing a film, probably since the first time I saw John Carpenter's The Thing, in, like before I came to Chapman. Um, I, I've seen that movie three times within like the span of a week. Um, it is just, it feels like a, an absolute all time classic to me in the sense of like a Spielberg or, um, a Hitchcock or, you know, a Kubrick film where just, you can tell Jordan Peele is like such a, just, he just adores cinema and he just he weaves it into this uh such intelligent narrative about how we as humans in the modern day view spectacle and um value that in the face of tragedy uh tragedy you know and it is just such a, it's a unique ufo film um with so many cosmic horror twists um if you haven't seen it highly recommend you go check it out uh and multiple times i would say like it's it's one of those films like the more you sit with it and the more you watch it the more you know notice and think about new things and uh i just i need this film to come out on physical media so i can own the blu-ray and just have it on repeats like a hundred times and just i want to write a video essay about it or something i don't know but it is just it is an it's one of, it is a film that has really inspired me then and i, I haven't felt that way in such a long time uh probably since uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 came out last year, but then before that, like, not really that much. Um, and I'm just talking about new releases in th- like that I watched in theaters. Um, yeah, F- fantastic film, and I've been obsessed with it for, like, the past month. Um, yeah, so that's what we've been watching. Um, you know, movies are great. We went to a wedding. We, uh, we went to a wedding. Oh, yes. Chris. Yes, all Chris, the us. best, yeah. the best man of the wedding. Why don't you tell us about this trip? <laughs> um, all right, yeah, sure. So, um, our close friend of the three of us, uh, his name's Cody. 
I think we probably mentioned him in passing at some points of the show. But we have a we have a friend of ours named Cody. He's from co- like we knew him from college. He was my freshman year roommate. Um, and yeah, we like he was getting married, and uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be asked to be his best man. Um, and you know, like us and our whole little gang of uh, peeps from California, we you know we packed our stuff and we we went up to um, to Oregon for the weekend, and it was a great time. Like we had a whole bachelor party. We had this rehearsal dinner and then um, the wedding itself was beautiful. We all were emotional and, you know, also just like having a great time. Um, all, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful experience. I loved we, it. We all um, looked sharp as fuck. We looked n- Yeah, we nice. all looked hella, hella Can't hella wait sick. for those photos to come out. It'll be a while, but yeah. can't wait to see them. See all of us yeah, dressed up. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a really, really great time. Um, yeah, and that's something else we got up to. I'm trying to think what else we've been up to. Uh, like, that's worth mentioning. But, like, outside of that, that I mean, that's the fundamentals for what yeah. the uh, the viewers need to know. <laughs> what the viewers need to know. Let's just, let's just all they need oh, to say. Oh, yeah, no. You yeah. guys don't... You, 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 yeah, you don't like, even... You, don't you, know don't, you don't know everything. Yeah, you don't know everything. Anyways. Um, let's just say debaucherous activities. <laughs> it, it, that's a word for it, I guess. Um... Anyways, uh, what the fuck are we talking about today? That's what we've been up to, but, you know, the movie industry doesn't stop when Stack stops. The movie industry keeps going, and holy shit, did it go, and, Something's and happened. shit, yeah. shit Something fucking happened. happened. Um, I think I'm going to refer to our expert on this, Brandon. I feel like he's been the most... Uh, yeah, hello everyone. I feel like he. Uh, I feel corporate. like he's our industry insider expert on you know out of the three of us. Um, yeah. He, he. I feel like he's the most. Uh, you know, he's the most tapped into the business of it all. So, Brandon, I'm gonna give you the floor to sort of tell everybody like, what the what the hell is going on with Warner Brothers and Discovery. What the hell are they doing? What the fuck is going on? Well, a little over a year ago, maybe even a little less. Warner Brothers and Discovery were two separate entities and they decided they wanted to merge and instead of having uh, a CEO from Warner Brothers take the lead or a co-lead between both both studios, they gave it to uh, Discovery's head CEO, David Zaslav. And that guy uh, was telling everybody, oh, we're going to merge Discovery Plus and HBO Max into one service eventually. And nobody really thought of that as like groundbreaking news because everybody was like, yeah, of course, that makes sense. If you're if you're going to have a company with two streaming services, one that is generally more popular than the other, then it makes sense to merge the two or at least the content between the two. Right. Uh, But things have sort of taken a turn in the past week, I'd say, maybe a little less than that when we're recording and tons of content. Uh, projects are being canceled and like not just like projects that are in development but projects that have been finished or had like a release date or air date scheduled for example there was a nasim padrad show that nobody talked about um it's called chad it was on tbs oh fuck and they basically where she plays like that little boy yeah and they had the second season entirely done. They had a release date. And two days or three days before the release date, Warner Brothers delayed the show indefinitely and then canceled the show. Now, they're trying to shop that show to other networks, but other projects are not so lucky. You've got the Scoob sequel that can- was canned. Uh, you've got Batgirl that was canned. And you've got all of these other projects that were HBO Max originals or HBO, like older HBO shows before the merger that are being taken out as tax write-offs. So they can recoup some of their earnings and potentially like start anew with projects. And boy, oh boy, is there a lot to talk about there. Yeah. So I think that's the gist, right? Yes. Yeah. I. It is one of the most mask-off uh like hollywood like industry moments i think i've ever seen in the history of this town where um it's hard to argue that like any of these decisions made uh this past week weren't out of pure greed and f- just pure f- 
like financial decisions, you know, um, and pure and, and just showing off what this, this industry has become where it is now, it is no longer an industry about art, you know, it's an industry about content and product, you know, and that's all that matters to those people who have the most money to fund these films, you know, um, and it's just, it's really depressing to see uh that they're not that people like david zaslov aren't like they're not being coy about this anymore you know he was very upfront about why he's doing these things you know um also a lot of systematic bullshit that went in the way where he was like oh the the you know these are the best people to now run this company for the job and it's all white people you know uh, all white men i should say um and they're axing the film you know with uh, a latina lead and still keeping the film with uh you know a wa- white non-binary person that is just causing havoc across america it was just announced today that ezra miller is now fucking what is he 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 got burglary charges uh, in vermont convicted felon uh, yeah, burglary yeah yeah, vermont, yeah. <laughs> and i'm just like to be this person is just terrorizing the Amer- like America. They they said that they now like have a cult. They they started a cult and they like they're going against the FBI and the KKK. Which I mean, one of those, the, yeah, one of those is fine. I'm mean, actually I, I'm fine with both. You know, uh, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a fan of the FBI either. Whatever. Fuck it. And sorry, person, FBI person listening to this, but I, I'm I'm not going to come after you. I'm just saying you fucking suck. You know. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> but good job with that trump stuff today i'll I'll give you points to that um the mar-a-lago stuff mm. anyways um yeah it's just it's really oh, yeah. it's just really disheartening to see um it's now just becoming money moves and it's not no longer a business about uh just sort of the movie making process and making something that means something to people it's now something that's like test products you know like audience scores you know test screenings and it's just completely undermining hundreds of people's hard work and dedication put into films like batgirl and the new scoob and the show chad you know think about how many people like we've all been on sets you know um we all know how that works and how many people like it takes to go just to shoot one scene of a movie you know um and think about that for whole feature length films and a whole season of a show and just just to see all that hard work like the count the 12 hour days that people had to go into uh the uh the you know there's people separating themselves from their families you know from their their partners and maybe children because they had to work long hours on these films you know i i know i know all too well what what it was like to like have relationships with people and have and having to like balance that with set life you know because it does it takes it 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 can take over your life you know chris knows this really well too like set life can take over your yeah. your social life and just to see all that stuff yeah. that people sacrificed um just dis- disappear and they've been compensated but like that doesn't matter for in this industry no. as much as like your work, yeah, you, right? So it's, like, it's all about what you've made, and if what you've made doesn't exist anymore, and because you can't show it legally to anybody in like a demo you, reel. Did because, you hear that yeah. they're still recording the soundtrack to Scoob right now, even though it's been everyone, yeah. even though everyone knows it's canceled. They've already they've already paid for the the they've already paid for the talent and the studio space so they're still recording it anyways even though it's not gonna go anywhere i'm like what the fuck why then why are you even doing it i bet are they just like showing up and just yeah. like sitting around and hanging out and like not even playing anything or are they just gonna like play like the worst shit ever and be like all right here this is what you paid for since it's not coming out you know that's what i would do i'd just like <laughs> i just like you know fucking fart into my trumpet and just like send that over to david Zaslav, being like here's what you fucking paid for dude like it's fucking crazy it's insane and unheard of and it scares me um one of my favorite things one of the funniest things to ever come out of this is um there's a twitter account that um 
it's called Green Lantern Updates because it's all it's all about like updates towards the new Green Lantern show that's supposedly still it's still supposedly still coming out on HBO Max. It's been confirmed that's not being canceled. But when all this happened, they just tweeted out, "No one is safe," and that's how I feel with Warner Brothers now. Like you can't guarantee a film's gonna come out now until you literally have bought your ticket and seeing and sitting in the theater for it. You know, like nobody is safe after this. Like, that is how ruthless this industry can be now. And I think, I, I have a feeling a lot of studios have often thought about doing something as evil as this, you know? Of just like, yeah. oh, well, you know, this movie's almost done, but imagine, like, it's not, it's not looking like it would be as good as, like, it, we wanted it to be, and it might just be more uh, profitable for us to just have it as a tax write-off and just never release it. But they, there, there's always been people been like, okay, but wait a minute, we gotta like, we still gotta put this out because we made it, you know. But now Warner Brothers and you're just like, fuck it, you know, give us that money, tax write off, boom, you know. And it's just like, when that, when both those movies were almost done, almost done being made, both in heavy post production, no one is safe, and that fucking terrifies me. Somebody, somebody said like. It's like they're prioritizing uh, unscripted content now. And they're not saying it's like, whether it's TV or movies, they're saying it's content because that's all they look at it as, like you said. And like they're getting rid of kids programming and animated programming, significantly scaling back on stuff that they've already planned and stuff. Like, And I honestly don't feel like they're being as forward as they are about what's being canceled because i don't think they want it all to tank you mean i don't want their share their shares are going to go down yeah. right now but imagine if they announce all of this stuff they're, they're just going to slowly sprinkle these need... cancel nuggets throughout the next few months until mm-hmm. this new streaming service is yeah. come out you know which is next yeah. year chris you've been yeah, silent what, what's your take on it, chris i haven't really talked to you much I mean, about this yeah I mean, like, largely, like, you guys are saying exactly what I'm thinking. Like, just the complete, like, very, what's the word, like, um, like, unabashed greed that you're seeing here. You know, it's like, you know, it's one thing if you're being subtle about it, at least. But, like, now they're just kind of going for it. And, like, uh, it's, like, yeah, like, you guys, you were talking about how, like, you know, the big thing for me on top of many things going on within the industry is the very distinct and noticeable lack of like care for the the people that work on these movies and like um and just like you know it's like no other industry operates like the film industry especially in terms of like people working Mm -hmm. the we i mean like we'll probably get into a conversation in just a bit about vfx houses and marvel that'll probably come up in a bit but like for example something as simple as like production assistants grips electrics like People that just work like their job on set, like twelve hours minimum yeah. a day, oftentimes going over over overtime and into late night overnights, and like you know, like the and they just have to like work with it. And like you know, there was this whole thing. Um, if anyone remembers, a couple of months ago, there was a whole thing with IATSE and when and they wanted to like revise like the the contracts that they had because you know uh, even to this day, even after its revisions. I still think it's insufficient and I think many others still feel that way yeah. too. But like, yeah, yeah, it's just like for one, for like, and we've talked about like, I don't know if we've talked about this on the show, but like we, in our film studies classes, we've talked about how like that one of the trickiest things with film as an art form is that it is innately an industry yeah. and it's not something that yeah. you can just like kind of, I mean, I guess in a weird way nowadays, you could just kind of pick up a camera but you, it's not that simple. Yeah. And like, you know, it's not like, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, you say we can take an iPhone, go on your computer, you know, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not really it, that simple. It sort of ties into uh, Nope, where it's like, you need you need yeah. spectacle it for it to have meaning now, the, nowadays, where you can't yeah. just film something off your iPhone because people won't find that interesting, you know? And in order yeah. to make it interesting, you have to have like quality technology and... Yeah, like you said, Chris, like... Unless you're Soderbergh. Like, film is, like, one of the only art forms that is inherently tied to economics because in order to make this thing, you have to buy this technology. And once you buy the technology, like, you got to make your money's worth because then 
you gotta have, you gotta make a profit off it because it's fucking capitalism. So that then that in turn you have to make it feel like a product. And you have to sell this thing to people so they can give you money for what you made. It it's just like whoa, like and this is now where you've come yeah. to where now the meaning of film as an art has now been diluted to content for things to where it's now just visual. It's now just visual pleasures that we plug into people's eyes and they pay money for that. You know. Yeah, I we've talked about in like film studies about like this idea of like media conglomeration and like how modern, uh, modern tastes in terms of uh, what we intake and like you know we've talked about we've talked about like TikTok and whatever you know and how that's impacted people's like viewing ability to view things yeah. and like and stuff like that and like you know I don't think like I none of us I think are like innately against TikTok but I do or like short form content maybe Brandon is but like. Uh, but, like, you know, and I think there is a place in the world for a little bit of both. But I will say, like, the fact that it's being so dominated by one by one thing and, like, the, and the fact that, like, these giant media conglomerates are catching on to what is trendy and what's generating numbers now. And the fact that they are not only supplying it, but actively pursuing yeah. that is something that, like, like I know it from afar, it may seem like a small thing, but the repercussions of that, what that implies for the future of what film is and can be, I think that's a very dangerous slippery slope. It's incredibly dangerous, and um, it's dangerous for like people's yeah. livelihoods. Like, Chris, are are you are you scared as me to like take jobs from Warner Brothers now? Like, I would be nervous as fuck. I would be, you know, like. Yeah, and they're not exactly on my uh on my highest list of like, oh, I gotta work for this. I mean, you know, if if I were like a freelancer, I mean, like you know. sure, I you know, I, you you would get guaranteed to get paid, you know. But in this yeah. stage in our lives, my we work. need, yeah, we need portfolio work, you know, and and yeah. I I've run into this a lot at at my company where like, um. You know, I will, I will, we will make like a, a campaign for a certain product, you know, um, or a video and it'll just get axed at the last second and that video will never come out. And I can't, I can't ever put that on like my reel or anything because a, the product was been revised, you know, or that just the people weren't happy with it, you know? So I can't, I can't share that on a public reel because that thing has never come out and because of my NDA, I can never release that, you know? Um, yeah. And it's just it's just scary to now work for huge conglomerates like you know Warner Brothers or Disney, where you could just your your work could just like you're like you can legally never show it to people, and if you can legally never show it to people, then yeah. you can you'll never have enough to like ever work laterally up in this industry, you know, because people want to see yeah. what your work is. So it's it's concerning. It's so exactly. concerning. And yeah, and like I remember like. We were talking to a friend of ours, and I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this person's name out. Good call for their benefit. But um, we were talking to this person, and they were telling us about how these giant like um like these giant film studios or like producers or whatever, they're always they they adopt such a distinct like sense of of like financial like a very a, such a financial like mindset and how they approach things. So much so that oftentimes a lot of these uh, production companies will kind of just like, yeah, like very ruthlessly axe projects, like without kind of any kind of concern or care so long as it's what's best and supposedly best in the long run on a fiscal level. And like mm -hmm. oftentimes like I, um, there was an analogy of like how Apple will, will produce something, but if they, if for whatever reason they're, analysts or whatever decide that it's probably not a good idea fiscally for one reason or another they will sit on that project for years and never release it if it's going to they will sit on the loss because they will make it back long term mm. and but like and like i get you know business is a business whatever but like at what expense are you doing this yeah you know and like and that's like, coming is, from is like the, yeah sorry that's coming no, from like I, a the like the most popular streaming service i'd say outside of like the netflixes of the world because mm -hmm. I, I i know tons of people who love hbo max you know for what it is and i feel like before this i think warner handled their content pretty pretty well yeah. i'd say especially given covid i thought i thought you they know, were the most 45 respectful day... towards their content you know 
in terms of right. like yeah. how like, they crafted their library for their streaming service and how they gave us films during the pandemic. Yeah. And they didn't flood the they didn't flood us with new content so we couldn't keep up like uh Netflix does or how yeah. Disney Plus has started to do where it's like okay, well, I feel kind of overwhelmed and I can pick and choose for sure, but like everybody's watching something different and I feel like I have to be in on everything. Whereas with HBO Max, you kind of know what you're going to get and they have such a diverse like library, you know? And like you said, like with the Apple, I know what conversation you're talking about. And it's like Apple has made great decisions business-wise, but also content-wise that do support the artist as well as the industry like and company they work for, you know? It's not one way or the other too much. Uh, and that's, I think that's what Warner was doing. And I was like super shocked by the information because I was like, HBO Max is one of my favorite streaming services. I use it like all the time. Ethan can like attest. I, he uses it as well. So yeah. it's, it's um. such a great service. And I, I'm, I'm just, I'm scared what this new one's going to look like. You know, like, are they going to get rid of TCM? Are those TCM movies, you know? Are, are the Ghibli movies gone? Are the Ghibli movies going to be gone? Like, is it just going to be blasting 90 Day Fiance? <laughs> just everywhere? And the, what are the, the, the Property Brothers? You know, they, they were saying that those were their flagship franchises next to Batman, Superman, the Looney Tunes. Who's that? The Property Brothers, 90 Day Fiance, and like diners drive-ins and dives and i was like okay i get that one like that okay yeah i get that so i i, I i'll be i'll be super excited i'm actually really excited to watch more diners drive-ins and dives on that service that's like the one that's like that is the one good thing about this is i get more trip d are you kidding me i get to rewatch the episode where he goes to moochies whenever i want sign me up but the rest of it i'm scared i'm scared as fuck i'm not gonna lie, i'm scared <laughs> yeah lots of question marks still i feel like they didn't answer a lot of questions purposely vague and like they have said like oh well this show is safe but do you believe them i, I don't know i if it's tricky i don't know we'll see tricky tricky we'll tricky. fucking see it. um yeah. shall we talk should we talk marvel and BFS? Let, let's let's just keep being fucking nihilist about the film industry shall we um <laughs> Yay. let's talk about all these stories that are coming out um so i feel like i feel like we've talked about this when we've done our after hours episodes of mcu stuff that has come out you know um you know since actually since our hiatus two two show a show and a movie came out um if anyone wants to get, let's just give our like little one sentence reviews of both of them miss marvel and thor love and thunder uh chris one sentence review for each what do you think um, Miss Marvel, uh, great start, falls apart at the end, uh, still fun. Um, Doctor Strange, I uh, love seeing Sam Raimi back. Uh, a little Marvel, a little over Marveled, but largely good, exciting. Brandon, Miss Marvel, a uh, very good show throughout. I think it has one or two episodes that. Oh, that's not one sentence. It's that's that fine. Are dull, but Whatever, one or two. Just, it's good. Just quick it's thoughts, good. Quick Generic but good. Uh, and then Thor: Love and Thunder, baby movie. Oh wait, I said Doctor Strange. No, you're it, good. It's I okay. Meant Thor, Love and Thunder. That's what he meant. Yeah, everyone. Thor, William. baby movie. Baby movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally baby. made by children. Literally. For, made by children for children. Um. My one sentence review is Miss Marvel, uh, Col Miss Marvel colon started out um incredibly uh unique breath and a breath of fresh air for the MCU, uh, comma, got muddled in the third act of the season, comma then ended on an okay note, comma, but still thought it was great overall. <laughs> Comma thought it was one of my favorites of the Disney Plus show so far. Period. Okay, that's my review of that. Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, colon. Uh, I I found it to be one, one of the only one of the only like MCU them. movies that, for its entire runtime, never took itself seriously. There, comma. Therefore, I never got invested in the film at all. Uh, comma. But I thought it was interesting. Interesting that Taika Waititi explicitly made a movie about himself as a father to 
daughters. Uh, semicolon, maybe. And you can see that throughout the film. And maybe I might watch it later down the road, might gain a little bit of appreciation for it, comma, but I still that still doesn't distract from its horrible flaws in pacing, um, improv, and most importantly, visual effects. So with that, let's talk about vis- the visual yeah. effects of Marvel because I, I feel like Marvel has been very, very good with their visual effects game for the first three phases, you know? I, I don't think I could ever look at some... I, you, you can say whatever you want about the coloring of Marvel. If you don't like it, you know, people say it's bland, gray color palette. That's fine. I just think the the VFX and the detail of it, I personally, I found it to be very good, you know? Um, I think it also continues to be pretty good for its first few shows, you know, WandaVision, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, Loki... Shang-Chi. I I was I was very yeah it, and Shang Chi like I found those with those budgets they used uh, visual effects very well I was impressed for the shows in particular because I was worried that it was gonna take the sort of grandiose scope of MCU and sort of CW it you know when I think of superhero TV shows I think of like CWizing it and I was worried they were gonna do that and lose its sort of the MCU seal you know of quality. Um, but it didn't for those ones. Um, but I feel like I started to see uh, cracks when I saw Eternals, you know? Um, I started to see, like, how the, the fucking... What are those guys called? The Deviants. How they looked. I was like, oh, that's that doesn't look too good. And then I saw Spider-Man. And I was like, huh, Sandman looks horrible, you know? He looks like fucking... Like... <laughs> like uh he looks like that food he, the actor literally wasn't he, there. the actor literally wasn't there and he looked like the the fucking food from jimmy neutron that his mom already always fed him you know what i'm talking <laughs> about that fucking cornmeal shit i'm yeah. like that's what sandman looks like why does he look like that um and then it just kept getting you know and then in doctor strange i love the new doctor strange but um the scene with the fucking eyeball monster uh with it i forgot uh it was it's it su- it's supposed to be Shumagor. It's, it's Gargantos, but it's supposed to be Shumagorath, but they couldn't get the rights to that name. Um that those scenes look awful. They looked awful, but the rest of the movie I think still looks good. But and then Moon Knight, uh <laughs> there's some scenes where he's in the suit where he looks just like a completely CGI model, you know. I thought I was like, Oh, that doesn't look very good. He, probably he, is, he absolutely you know? is. No. Um it's like when um, he is jumping across buildings or Miss Marvel is jumping. You can totally tell like it's not a person. It's yeah. like a CGI and then stand. I, I think yeah. I think the worst so far has been Miss Marvel and Thor: Love and Thunder, where you get mm. yeah, Thor: you Love get, and Thunder was my brain. You get Miss Marvel, um, you know, always having to go off screen to do her, you know, jumping on light panels or like doing flips and stuff, and having people react to her you know or having her just fall out of frame as herself and then when you see it she, you can see she's like a ps3 character you know and then <laughs> thor love and yeah. thunder like it it was just a, it was astonishing what it looked like i mean it was all i i heimdall's kid, heimdall's kid the the floating the floating <laughs> child head and um what you know fr- friend of the show harrison pointed out that natalie portman in that scene is just standing a pose in the background, not even facing towards Thor or any other character, just facing off, staring into space. And I'm like, what? What the hell was that? And then you had Taika like making fun of the VFX artists for that scene, you know, in that analysis thing, and and just like how f- it, everything looks so flat, even though they used the volume for that. You know, I thought I thor love and thunder was the first the batman was the first mcu film to fully use the volume and that was really exciting because the bat it looked wonderful in the batman it looks phenomenal in the mandalorian yeah. you know um so i was like oh we're actually gonna get we're gonna get actual depth because people have complained about vfx and marvel films where there's no you don't really get, get a sense of depth of field which i get that like i i you can see that in like the doctor strange movies you know um but this just felt flatter than ever which were they like were they like blocked like right in front of the screen? I don't understand like what happened and it maybe it, it was just like at the end of the day there was just wasn't enough time put into these visual effects because of their demands, you know? And 
Um, yeah, we have like four friends who work. I'm not. They're gonna remain nameless, yeah. but they work on Marvel projects, and they're like, they are a tough client. They're such a tough you know? client. Yeah. And just like it, the out the the outrage has come out even more with She Hulk because that character is going to be entirely CGI. Granted, I think she has looked a lot better in recent trailers, um, but we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah. yeah, like what we want to talk about is a lot of stories have just come out about um, the insane crunch time um, that these visual effects artists are put through. Um, and the demands and the last minute decisions. Um, it has come out that Marvel is infamously a very un- indecisive studio when it comes to planning out action sequences where they want things, entire action sequence, action sequences changed within a, the last month of production. And VFX artists are, suppo- are supposed to take 12 hour plus days, you know, um, like 60 hour weeks, you know, to just crunch working weekends um there's been stories about just yeah. people vfx are just losing their minds over these and now and yeah. because of this there people are just not working on marvel movies anymore there's people who are just flat out refusing to and honestly you can see that you know and it's just it's insane yeah. the, it's it's wild the one big thing that i remember that i kind of, that really put in perspective for me is the fact that the the VFX artists do not have a union. No, they have no they have no no guaranteed support. Um, and on top of that, a lot a very common uh, trend, especially in Hollywood, um, in a lot of Hollywood films, is uh, outsourcing VFX work, especially like the grunt VFX work, to um, to uh, countries where that kind of service is a lot cheaper. Yeah, oftentimes that's in in. That oftentimes, especially in Marvel's case, that is in India, yeah. um, and like, but yeah, nonetheless, the the amount of intense like like back and forth that goes through Marvel and how they approach their filmmaking is so industrial and like, you know, I know Marvel's a giant company and they, they you know they've got to be doing they have to do something, but like to this extent, it's also very concerning and also like one one thing that I was thinking about that really put this in perspective for me is. Um, if uh, anyone who watched or was at Comic Con this year, uh, they announced Phase Four, Five, and yeah. Six. Um, so big, big, you know, basically laid out a whole new saga for us because we finished the Infinity Saga in ten years. Um, however, the Multiverse Saga supposedly ends. It's only five, five years, but long. there is. It's only five years long, but there's which ten isn't times as a bad much thing. Content. However. <laughs> Well, actually, it can kind of yeah. be a bad thing. However, another thing is that the amount of films hasn't decreased it, or stayed relative. To five. It's actually it's grown. doubled, doubled actually. So, in in a phase throughout the Infinity Saga, we've got what 21, 22 films, yeah. and no shows because no, yeah, no shows, no canon, just, was, tw- was, just twenty three films, three shows. yeah, and. Uh, Multiverse Saga is intending to do just as many films in addition to additional shows in half the time. Yeah. Which, like, Liz, like, you know, and this go this ties right back into our whole thing about content, yeah. you know, and like, we, we've, yeah. we've talked, we actually talked about this before, whether or not one day there's going to be people who, whose only sense of film is Marvel or Disney or there's going to be all these like niche niches that like they're just going to dominate people's perception of what film is. Yeah. In a better world, this would have been a podcast. This would have been an after hours where we just reviewed the Marvel shows and uh, it was uh, we're excited. Talked about what yeah. we're excited. And yeah, like for went the over projects. the phases. And like, I, I would love to sit down and talk about theories for the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, you know? And like, what's going to happen in Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Mania now that it's been revealed? Like, Modok, my favorite Marvel villain, yeah. is going to be in it. They. They confirmed Fantastic Four, Fantastic who were like Four. My, my gateway into Marvel. Yeah. You know, they were the ones that got me into anything to do with Marvel and them and Spider Man. But like, yeah. But it just like, doesn't feel right. I, it doesn't I, feel right talking about it. No, there's it something, of, yeah. There's, there's a part of me that's like, like, there's the little kid inside of me, you know, who's like so excited to, you know, see all this stuff happen. But at the same time, the adult in me is looking at it and just being like, Jesus fucking Christ, yeah. man. Like, Tate. Take a breath. Like you've got enough money. 
And time, you got and time. What, yeah, what you is the really... fucking rush? You know, like you already, yes, you like already every, own the film industry. The like people are gonna show up. Yeah. You don't need to make, you know, like just keep, go back to releasing two movies a year and like two movies a year and like three shows. You know, one for each like uh, quarter. You know, well, not really quarter. Like you got a springtime, a summertime, and a fall and winter show. You know, that's all you need. And people will, you yeah. will still be in the conversation every week. If that's what you're worried about, that people will lose the conversation. Marvel movies, don't worry. Your fans are, the your fans are real for some folks. The fatigue is real, They're but loyal. They your fans loyal. are loyal as fuck, yeah. and it's big. So you will not have to worry about staying out of relevance. But the, all this, the way Marvel has been treating their VFX workers, and just how it's affected the, the sort of quality of their. I hate the quality of their product, not the quality of their art. Product, yeah, yeah. product. It's what is it's this? just it's jarring. Um, and you know I'm, I I will always be you know um a a fan of Marvel because th- this was like this was my original trilogy, you know my original Star Wars trilogy where I the movie that got me into movies was seeing Iron Man in two thousand and eight at the Dollar Theaters in Sugar House Park, you know. And then going out after that and buying my Ant Man action figure and watching Avengers Earth Minus Heroes and learning about, you know, all this stuff. And it's like it really inspired me to like, you know, go learn more about film and get me to where I am today. So in a ways like that's what it it always has a place in my heart and I feel like I'll always I'll always be there for these shows just to see like what's going on. Uh I talked about this with Chris. Like I feel like the MCU has just turned into like you know how every family has that show. You know, it's the it's just the show you watch. You know, like, uh, you go down, like, uh, on a, a weeknight with your family, you go down to the living room, and you put on the show, and you watch it, and you're like, oh, that was great. And then you don't, you don't talk about it for the rest of the week until the next the next episode comes. You know, it's just like, it, it becomes more of a ritual that just brings you comfort, you know? Um, and I feel like that's the point I'm at right now with the MCU. Um... You know, it all. I'd always have a soft spot for it because what it done, what it's done for me. But like, I can't, I can't put any more in, en- like any more energy into this because of just like, a how exhausting the discourse has become around it, and just hearing all these horror stories about how, about this crunch and like how they're forcing out these films, you know, and shows. Um, it's just become really disheartening, you know, and. I don't know if it's just because I've gotten older, you know, but I don't think so. I just think it's just because uh, this industry is just like, I don't know. It's it's finally it's finally catching up to what we, we talked about when we were talking about like attention spans, TikTok. Um, Brandon's flossing right now. He's still standing up, by the way, everybody. Brandon hasn't sat down. I haven't sat. I haven't stood up yeah, this entire podcast. We're still rolling. We're an hour in. Impressive. Yeah, good job. You know, Brandon, his Knott's Berry farm ch- uh, training of stand. I was about to say that that's probably helpful. Oh, he's like, probably you know he's probably strengthened those hammies after standing up putting people in logs all day long. You know, um, <laughs> every day is leg day. Every day is leg day at the old log ride. Every day is log day for Brandon. Um, there he is, showing a picture of him and his buddies riding down the log early in the morning. Uh, there's they're riding each other's logs. Look at that. Um, anyways what was i saying uh yeah i don't know what do you you guys feel how do you guys feel about marvel right now like i i've i've been getting the same amount of like fatigue with marvel that i have been having lately with star wars um and like i remember thinking about like it's sad to me to see that because those especially those two things were like pivotal um pivotal uh weird to say but franchises in my upbringing yeah. you know like i would stay up late watching uh, star wars the clone wars and like be watching those movies over and over and over again and like just like reading marvel comics reading like oh dc comics or whatever and like but i'm seeing all this stuff and it, it's like and you know me i know marvel has had its critics for it, it has had Forever. its own fair share of critics ever since it started you know and like but for me, I was able to work through that because nonetheless, I, regardless of how I may feel about the industry or whatever, I still enjoyed what they were making and it was coming out at a pace that I can keep up with and enjoy and sit with and everything. 
But it's like, my God, like, watching Miss Marvel, I, by the way, I, like, I, I still really enjoyed that show. However, when I was watching it, I remember just kind of sitting there just being like, okay, I, I, now I know a new superhero. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting that same, like, jolt of, like, oh, this is a great story. Like, this is awesome. Like, you know, like, I'm learning about this character and they're developing and the world is expanding and everything. But I feels like I'm just, I'm just absorbing stuff now. And, like, but not really taking it in in the way that I feel like I should with my, with the stuff I consume. And, like, it's almost, like, one of those things where it's, like, is it just, is it a me thing? Like, is it, it is it just, like, a natural part of, like, as time goes on, it, those things will walk away from me? Yeah. Is that a bad, is that necessarily a bad thing? But also, like, you know, yeah, I would like to still have Marvel in my life. I like Marvel stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's a little... It's just like as years have gone on, especially as the, especially since the end of Phase Three of Marvel, like my interest has really declined, and like I'll probably still watch everything, because you know I'm still committed to it. But at the same time, it's like it, I'm not excited for these movies anymore. I mean, I'm I'm ex- again. It's one of those things where it's like I keep going back and forth because I am crazy excited for Black Panther too. Mm-hmm. I really want to see that movie, mm-hmm. but it's not like. Like I, I remember like Avengers Endgame. We had we had a prayer before we went to go see. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we did. That was that was a, that was a lifetime ago. That was a fucking life. That was a fucking lifetime ago, guys. Like just where yeah. where all three of us were in our lives. Uh, that was the best movie going experience I've ever. That's, had. That's, that was that's still, still number. Yeah. That's still number one. Um, and just like. Just think of all the shit that's happened to us after that. Wow. We wow. L- look at us. Who would have thought? Not me. Not me. Brandon, what about you? How are you feeling about all this? I mean, I'm not the type of MCU fan to be like, well, work harder. Why are you working oh, at this job? You those know, people make me the, fucking the... <laughs> sick. They're like, yeah. uh, oh, if you don't fucking like working there, then quit. Uh, there would be someone who would rather have your job than you if you want to just, if you don't, if you're too yeah. weak to fucking do it. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, people, <laughs> it's either that or fucking nothing. Or starvation. Or starvation. Yeah. They're, they've, yeah. they've put their lives, they put their fucking lives to learn how to d- develop these skills to make these kinds of movies. You know, like learning VFX isn't like fucking learning to ride a bike where you just learn, t- teach yourself in one weekend. You know, this t- takes years of craft, of dedication, of just attention to detail to fucking put yourself in that position. And people should not be feeling stressed by uh, crunch times. So they should be fe- feeling fucking accomplished that they're working for the top Hollywood studio. You know, the top fucking m- media thing ever in all of the world right now they should feel fucking proud of themselves but instead they feel fucking exhausted and scared that at any moment they could lose their job where they shouldn't feel that way you know so don't give me any of that bullshit they should just quit because that's not fucking true at all anyway sorry yeah yeah it's no i agree i we all agree with you yeah <laughs> no but sorry for interrupting uh uh Continue. Yeah, I I I'm always been a big fan of Marvel since I was like a kid. I I read the comics first. I didn't even know there were movies until uh until Captain America came out cuz he was my favorite superhero. Mm-hmm. But I didn't see it until I saw it on like a cruise ship because my parents were super protective of what kind of media I watched. So PG-13 movies were pretty much off the table. And yeah, I prefer like the Avengers and MCU movies to any blockbuster franchise today. I think even with the phase four decline in quality, whether that because be because there's just so much of it and we're becoming so used to the formula yeah. that it's like becoming a little like, okay, like show me something fresh and new. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, I would rather watch it than Transformers or the new Harry Potter movies that are coming out, you know? Because, because at least I, I can still feel like passion behind this stuff i can tell that people are fans you know where something like as heartless as like the sony films that feels like nobody gives a shit with what they're making like yeah transformers but i i i think my most anticipated mcu movie behind ant-man just because for reasons that it's ant-man you know i i I ride and die with that dude 
is Guardian Usually. is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, because I feel like the amount of passion that James Gunn has put into these characters and emotion, I feel like that that is going to make for one hell of a film, you know. And I just I hope that uh he is a director with the integrity to treat his vi- visual effects artists correctly, you know, and make sure that his product is takes all the time it needs to be to have the same standard of quality as the last two films because that dude he has put some sentimentality behind this guardians franchise both for himself and for me personally like i find that a very sentimental franchise for myself you know and that one i'm extremely looking forward to but you know the other ones i can feel the love but i'm just i'm not feeling the love in terms of how they're made but in how they're I can feel in terms of how they're conceived, but other ones like the Hasbro universe, you know, or what other big blockbusters are there? You know, um, I mean, like you can name the good ones, but like Jurassic World, is Jurassic like... World, there's fucking nothing behind those, you know, the Venom verse, nothing. Uh, what else? Fantastic Beasts, like I said, those are those are done for. Who cares? You know, uh, <laughs> Disney Star Wars, you know they. There's not really like. There's not really. It, it seems so random. Yeah, I I just don't, I don't feel I don't feel passion for like, for big blockbuster filmmaking, which is why I find movies like Nope so special because I can feel love weaved into every frame of that film, you know, and it's wholly original, um, and it's just wholly original spectacle filmmaking, which is something so rare, you know. I know, I know you two are huge fans of the new Top Gun, and you could argue the same there, you know, where it's like, it takes you back to the classic 80s blockbusters, you know? Um, but better. But better, it's true, it's better than the original, by, like, by a mile. Um, <laughs> but you just, you just don't, you don't feel that, that much anymore, you know? Those, those fleeting moments in cinema are so rare now, that like, I feel like the only sort of true meaning that i find in films these days are from like the smaller more intimate ones from like you know i'm thinking like a pisha pong where sit memoria you know or like crimes of the future uh those are films that i feel like truly were put like so much shit into you know um or or documentary filmmaking i i feel like documentary filmmaking has like gotten me as i felt a lot more profound towards it i'm talking like Fire of Love, we met in virtual reality. Hell, even Jackass Forever, you know, like that. I, I don't know. It's just it's so weird to see things evolve like this, and it's con- it's a confusing time to say, you know. Yeah, no, it is odd. It's all it like, and one of the things that's like that makes it so interesting is the fact that like film has never had a stable history. You know, if film as an art form is always being rocked by something that's going on in the world, industrialization, shit like that. It's just like there's always something going on. Yeah. And like and, you know, film is ever changing. We don't know how this form of art is going to evolve over years. I mean, hell, like when did we get, like we take sound for granted, but that's like a little over a little maybe a little over 100 years. old. Yeah. You know, and like color that's another thing but like film, celluloid film that left when as we were growing up i mean as far as like that being the standard if you know what yeah. I mean. and it's like it's almost like film is constantly changing and like will always be like it will always become something that you don't recognize and i know like a lot of especially older filmmakers might feel that way too especially like when they look at what's going on right now I know Scorsese and Tarantino especially feel mm-hmm. that. Um, but, like, yeah, it is... It, it's it's a weird thing to have to try and make peace with. Yeah. When I talk to, like, all of my friends from work who aren't necessarily film industry people, 90% of them watch only, like, Marvel movies and or, like, Minions or Jurassic World. And they say, wow, that was good. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? And it's because they don't go out and see, like, search out all the other 
entertainment offerings. Like, yeah, they'll give Jordan Peele's Nopa, like, a look. And I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, that was great. That was, like, amazing. And that makes me happy. Yeah. But the fact that they're like, what's this movie? And it's like, well, it's, like, possibly one of the best movies of the year, but you didn't see it because the studios didn't push it enough or it's just you're not interested in that like come on it, it's really upsetting yeah no yeah it's hard but that's the industry we work in we love we love to hate it and hate yeah love it. it's i don't know it it feels nice that we're we're able to pull apart and analyze this industry you know that we're so well versed in this stuff because we care about it you know we care about it so so much because film means everything. That that is how, you know, that's how the three of us. That's how we. That's learn. how we. That's how yeah. we express ourselves, and that's how we see the world. You know, it's it's weird that like, there are people on this planet that, you know, their ways of expression and seeing the world are through completely different ways, and ju- they're just as valid. But for us, that's, that's just how that's just how we work. You know, and that's how. You know, that's how we've sort of come together and formed this bond and formed this podcast. Um, and and that's how we're going to yeah. give you more content to come. So uh, I feel like with that, that's a good good place to end this, this yeah. good uh, return episode to Stacked. Uh, stay tuned, guys, for lots of more, you know, fun episodes and conversations. Um, if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see from us, put it down in the comments, you know, if it's episode topics, you know, I, I, it is, it has really touched me and I know it's touched, uh, Chris and Brandon that we've, we've gotten people who have asked us like, what, Hey, where's the show? You know, we, we, we listen, we listen yeah. to the show and there are people like, Hey, you should people who we, we've never met in our lives are like, Hey, you should do this. That would be really cool. You know? And for me, I, I don't think for the three of us, it's never, it's never been about like, Oh, we need to get we need to get this many views on oh, YouTube, yeah. this many listens. We we've it's, always just been it's about never a job it's never work. a job, you know. We we, pay, we we have our own ways to pay the bills and we're just we're just three dudes that like talked about movies and we one day were just like, "Hey, let's just let's put mics up to us cuz I cuz we think we're we're interesting and funny, you know, and maybe <laughs> some people will too. And and a few people have and it means a lot to us, you know. Um yeah. So we're we're gonna keep just giving that to you because we enjoy doing it, and you know I I I truly believe that when someone enjoys when someone shows that they enjoy what they do, then other people will come and enjoy that as well. You know, which I I guess ties ties back to like how the industry is being. You can tell that there are people who find that making these movies as just work. You know, but movies like Nope, movies like you know. Uh, Marcel the show with shoes on. You can tell that there is passion Ooh. and love behind movies like that. You know, um, and that's how we want to take stacked. You know, we just want to talk about movies and create a community of people sure of a community of just around talking movies around these three idiots right here. You know, so you can you can ride with us or you can't. Or you don't have to. Fine by us, but we're gonna still be here. You know, uh, these this these these your headphones. Uh, these these sound waves are always up and open to you to listen. You know, we'll always be here, just having a good time, being ourselves, and we hope you're you're we hope you're along for the ride. So, on to the next the the next return of stacked and uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next week with our regular scheduled program. Bye. Bye. Hello. Stacked is back. It's back, baby. Hell yeah. He's back.